racquetball friends, rackets for you. Back again. Today is Saturday, July 28th, 2012. Uh, I'm going to call this probably tips and tricks and my stringing methodology. So let's get started. Uh, let's get on with the uh, tips. Okay, tips. I, and I only have a few of them, but uh, vibration dampener right here. What this is, is uh, vinyl tubing, colored vinyl tubing on the cheap, okay? You can get this probably at your craft store uh, or on eBay, of course. And what it is, this is uh, 1 8 ID by 3 16 OD vinyl tubing colored. You can get it in clear or, or whatever. It does the same thing as those $4 fancy vibration dampeners. So. I'm not going to show you how to do this, but you can see. You just, you know, interweave it and all that stuff, tie a knot, and there you go. You got a vibration dampener. Grips. Okay, this is a uh, Wilson grip. It, you know, your grip gets old and crusty and all that stuff. Just take it off and put a new one on. You can get like three of them for like under five bucks, four dollars or something like that. Put on a new tacky synthetic grip or put on one of those uh, rubber grips that I talked about before. Um, oh, the um, your wrist strap as well. And a lot of them are fancy and colorful and all this stuff. Here's a nice colorful one right here. That's factory. They're nice and all that. But you can use a darn shoestring or a boot string or something cheap on the cheap okay um, all right that's for the tricks on the rackets okay tips I want to get to is um, I, I consider myself more of a, of a hands-on mechanic you know hardware guy you know deal with the rackets sure I can teach you beginners how to play racquetball but you know there's so much good information out there and there's so many good players that already have some very very good information you can get up and going real quick so I do have a couple of recommendations of who to go to not discounting anybody else but these two I've checked out and uh, it's a wealth of information and one of them on the cheap it's free it's on on uh, YouTube and it's uh, Sean Royster I don't know the man but uh, he in my opinion he knows exactly what he's talking about and he's, uh, his handle there on uh, YouTube is Expert Village, Sean Royster. He's got a bunch of great videos out there, and it's all free. And he's been out there for a while. And to find that, you, you know, you can go to How to Play Racquetball or type in Racquetball Racket. Uh, but that's Sean Royster, uh, Expert Village. The other one, been around for a while, and, and you can get excerpts for free on YouTube, uh, but you can buy the whole DVD, and it's uh, uh, Fran Davis, Fran Davis, and she did this with Head, and she was playing for Head, and she covers it A to Z as far as how to play, what to do, this and that, and it's uh, entitled, I think it's called Building Your Racquetball Dream House. Building Your Racquetball Dream House, Fran Davis, anyway. For instructions, that's good. And I'm not discounting anybody else because there's a lot of you out there that have done a great job. So just go check it out, how to play racquetball or whatever. Um, by the way, I'm wearing the shirt, my grandson, okay? So I want to display my grandson Donovan in this video. I love him to death. He just turned one year old and he's great. Now I want to talk about my <clears throat> my stringing methodology as it will. As you know if you've watched my videos I think there's too much string in all these rackets. Alright, they, they cover you know, half inch, half inch square uh, and then they look pretty and all this and uh, to me it's just too much string. For me, the way the racket, um, 
we have a tendency to, uh, it's built in us, you know, once you get acclimated to a racket, whether it's a 22 inch or whether it's one of these smaller ones, I don't know, this might be 19, I don't know. But once you're acclimated to it and you hit, hit it a while, I mean, you want to concentrate in the middle, in the sweet spot, and that's what you do. You, you just, it's kind of like brushing your teeth in the morning, you know, that's where you want to hit it. Every now and then you'll hit it here, you don't mean to, but you do. But you usually hit it here. Well, this is a softball. This is three and a half inches circumference there. And that's pretty much the range of where we tend to hit on our acclimated racket that we're acclimated to. Well, the racket ball is only two and a quarter inches. Okay, so as long as it doesn't go through the hole, you're doing okay, all right? Now this one, obviously it's not going to go through the hole. This is uh, original uh, E-Force. This is a head one that I have um, altered and skipped to the mains. Okay, by the way, most of the mains in the now day rackets, in the mains there's usually anywhere from 14 to 16 mains. And the patterns, you know, the, this one goes through the handle, okay, on this uh, E-Force. Uh, patterns as well. This one is a Wilson original, again, pretty much half inch by half inch pattern. A semi-V pattern, but it's got all the mains just up and down, nothing fancy. Whereas this one, this is my old, that one that that guy about killed, that bent the snot out of it, you know. That's got the uh, two, two in one hole type thing, you know, it's just fancy, they all play. These, the, the rackets are just vessels, it's just like a boat. You know, you got to carry the cargo or whatever you're carrying, as long as the boat doesn't uh, leak, then you won't sink. Well, it doesn't matter the shape of the racket or what it's made of, if you hit the wall, it'll break, or it could break. But it's about the strings, what's inside. But anyway, I like eight mains, okay, that's like half, uh, half a sixteen. So this one here, it's got eight mains. So to me, um, my perfect square pattern is uh, between three quarter square to one inch, actually. The ball's not going to go through it. You don't need all the string. And then the, on the sides, as you can see, there's a lot of space. This is like an inch and a half by three quarter inch right here. Well, you don't hit it over here generally, and even if you did, uh, it's not going to go through. So the whole thing about this is that on the sides, it's kind of like the stock market. You know, you got um, uh, you, you got support and you got resistance at the top. So it's everything wants to come back to the mean. You know, come back to neutral. So it's a spring thing. You know, it's just. On the outside, it's just support and resistance. You bounce off and it comes back. This is where you're all concentrated on. So that's why I like to alter the strings and take half the string out pretty much. Uh, oh, here's another example of that. Uh, the um, vinyl tubing right here. Here's another way to do it as well. You don't have to tie it. You can just wrap it around like that as well. If you want to, you can do that as well. Get creative like that. So I believe that's all we have for now. Uh, of course, when I when I string a racket, which this is that old cheapy, that uh, Wilson Hyper Alloy uh, Express, which I put the polyester mains in it, and. I incorporate a uh, vibration dampener, which is a vinyl tubing, and you can't get it out unless you cut the string, so it's not going to fall out, So, but it does the same thing. Oh, the other thing is, here's an old school plastic racket. Now that's as big as a pattern as I want to go. The ball is not going to go through it. This is about an inch by an inch holes. It looks like it's wide as the Grand Canyon, but it's fine. It's got eight mains, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and you're going to hit right in here anyway. So you don't need half inch squares, quarter inch squares. You know, but that's as big as I'd want to go right there is about an inch square. And it, the ball's still not going to go through and you'll play fine. So Anyway, I'll check in another time. Thanks for listening. Rackets for you checking out.